it's really awesome to see Richmond go through this um, this public art boom, um, especially as someone who's from a city who's already gone through that boom. I grew up in Philadelphia. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but that was like my art gallery. I mean, in Philly, you can't walk a block without seeing a mural. Um, and they were, they're very community driven. Um, the murals look like me. My uh, high school art teacher, he encouraged me to go to VCU. Uh, I decided to go into sculpture. And that way, if I didn't end up being a professional artist, I could be a welder or carpenter. I learned about a wide variety of um, tools and uh, equipment and lots about materials. So when I got out of school, I was pretty, pretty well equipped to do, to do whatever. I went to architecture school at Hampton University. I graduated, um, practiced architecture for about seven years hated every year of it. <laughs> and uh, um, the recession hit in 2009 and I had some time to kind of be me and um, started uh, making art, did more art in 2009 than I've ever done in my life. Um, and ran across some really good opportunities, was asked to do my first mural. Um, I did that mural and fell in love with the process. I wasn't a muralist. I wasn't known as an artist. Um, it was something that someone said, here's a free wall. You can do whatever you want to. It was uh, a politician holding a gun to his head. And so once I did that, uh, some people had some, compla <laughs> some complaints about it. It was the first time that I realized that people were consuming my art. And so that was the first time that I thought, hey, like this is, this is something. Um, and it also awoke in an accountability to the community in which these things live. The one that's my favorite right now is the one that's on the intersection of First and Broad. Um, and that was done with Girls for a Change and not because of any aesthetic reason, it's because the girls kind of poured their heart and soul into the meaning of that. And they still congregate to that now. Well, the first thing that I noticed about painting murals is that w before I had any content on the wall, people that were walking by would, would say, good job. And uh, I don't get that here. Um, that it's just me and my own demons here in the studio. But out in the world, when you do a mural, everybody sees it even whether they want to or not. It's just there. So the images that I make don't have the same power that Hamilton might have been talking about, but they have um, a subtle power that it's not a specific message, it's just a general message of happiness and collaboration and uh, fun. I love the fact that I can just share something with everybody. Uh, they might not like it, and um, but, but that's okay because it's in their city. It's, it's for them to not like, or it's for them to like. I made uh, uh, about 600 of these little houses, these little things with the magnets on the bottom. So I thought that I would stick these wherever around Richmond. Um, and uh, just for people to notice or be curious about and wonder why it's there, but um, but they ended up being stolen. Uh, people would call me and say, ah, I found one of your houses, and uh, thanks. And I was like, well, why don't you put it back? But it, it was like their own gifts. And uh, someone uh, contacted me and um, wanted to tell me that they had gotten one and gave it to their mom. And their, when their mom died, she was buried with it because she said that it made her feel it made it feel like family or home. And uh, when I thought of it like that, it then occurred to me what, what all it might have meant. I just try to use the power of art in general. I um, have kind of been trying to be an example um, of a living, breathing black artist, uh, which sounds funny, but the reason I did not go into art 
was because I didn't have an example. And so um, I often do things in Richmond public schools. Um, and when I do those things, I, I make it a point to go to the art classes and talk and do things like that because I think it's important for, for kids to see that you can be anything. The, the water harvesting sculpture at Benford Middle uh, was, was to me like a three-dimensional mural. And I thought it was important to include the students because they go to that school and I wanted them to be invested in it. So they all drew what they wanted to have happen over in that corner of the uh, middle school. One of the drawings was exactly like my original drawing, but it was it had cooler ideas in it than my drawings. Um, so we, we used that one as the, the basis to, to make this uh, sculpture at the Benford Middle. Most people think that murals are this monumental thing because they're larger than life and things and that they stay forever, but they're, they're supposed to go away. Hamilton and I actually worked on one that was, it took longer for us to paint it than it actually stayed up. It was painted over uh, within a couple of weeks, but Hamilton wasn't upset at all. He, he just shrugged it off. Okay, it went down. <laughs> if that makes any sense, like it just leaves room for something else. And maybe the neighborhood has changed or the place has changed and that, that, should, that should happen. I, I just believe in that power of art. In general, it's really for people to experience and then, you know, move beyond the art.